I've, I've been knowing this guy for five and a half years. He was housed. When they fall out of housing, they become instantly vulnerable on the streets. I honestly feel that each individual in the top 14 should be housed and will be housed. That's my goal. I work with Hollywood's top 14. It's 14 individuals that have been in the city of Hollywood, most of them decades, and they're high utilizers of emergency systems or hospitals. These are individuals that every social service agency in the city of Hollywood has tried to outreach and place in housing for the last 10, 15 years. They call it service resistant. and we're on our way to Hollywood to meet up with Douglas. What up, Douglas? How are you? <laughs> what we're doing early in the morning is we're focusing particularly on people that are too sick to access services on their own, but not really sick enough to be compelled to treatment and to actually talk to them in an environment that's less overwhelming than the middle of the day. I did get your phone messages. Hey man. Are you okay? Yeah, I'm all right. I'm all right. I was just. Why does your face look puffed up? Is it puffed up? A little bit, mm -hmm. yeah. You never yeah. thought about going back to the hospital? Well, I would if, if I need to. I, I, I'm not opposed to it, you know? You know, before when he wanted to go to the hospital, he had really bad MRSA infection. MRSA seems to be a really common problem for a lot of people living outside right now. One of our top 14 died in this alley right here. You know, it's kind of rough, you know, you're working with a person for a year or two and you're slowly watching them die on the streets build a relationship with them and then you just watch them pass away on the streets and it hurts. It really does. There's a lot of outreach teams out here that uh, give out sandwiches, give out clothing. I'm trying to get you off the streets. I don't let somebody else give them a sandwich. It's this guy. This guy. Terrence, what's up? Yeah. You can't be out here forever, Terrence. That's for sure. We know that. And I know you don't like it out here. That's deep. That is deep. But what you can get. I'm dying anyway. You don't have to die. It's been five years. Are you crying? I don't cry. Don't cry. Don't you cry. Ready? One, two, three. <coughs> uh. mm -hmm. Yeah, we need a paramedic. He was housed. He was housed. We was case managing him in the housing. He lost his housing. If we was any other agency, he would have went back to the streets and probably died on the streets. Do you guys know which hospital he's going to? Your family or? It's caseworker. People think just homelessness, but there's a lot of people out here really sick. And it's hard enough to try to navigate the county system. They don't take the medication. Medical appointments is almost impossible to make if they don't have a case manager taking them to their appointments. So it's a, it's a mess. We have seen patients come in who are here in our ER every other day who are hospitalized for weeks and months and countless times. And half are explicitly homeless and maybe half of the remaining we suspect are homeless, but they're not really talking to us about their housing situation. They have a range of social issues like homelessness or substance use. And then they have this piece where their social fabric 
has just fallen apart for them. So their family members are no longer in contact with them. Maybe their neighbors are no longer there, and so they don't really have anybody to turn to to help them out. What ends up happening when we get somebody successfully connected to somebody like Anthony is we can then call Anthony when they're in the ER and we can problem solve together. Having somebody be like, I am in charge of helping this patient no matter what, no matter where, call me, is the best thing that's ever happened. Once you hit the top 14 list, you never come off that list. I'm almost like a family member. Still have Eddie Carter that needs to go to the doctor. Eddie is 65. He knows he's on the top 14. He knows he's been homeless, probably the longest person in Hollywood. He refused housing, came back to the streets, double amputee. That's top 14. This is his. This is where he plugs into his wheelchair at, at night. I told Queen's Care that he needed to go to the hospital, so we set it up for him to go to the hospital. He knew he's supposed to meet us right here this morning. The city still wants to go to pick him up. He's not here, so he's hiding from us right now. So I gotta go try to find him. Wanna go to Starbucks? Sure. He's like a ghost. Oh, you can't miss him. You can't miss him. How you doing, Snake? <laughs> still, you not going? No, that ain't against the law, Eddie. I got you that chair. That is the only thing that makes you feel real good about your chair. No, I'll feel good when I place you in housing. No, I, I, I believe that when I see it. <laughs> Me too. Either way it goes, he's getting housed. Either way it goes. He doesn't know that though, but either way it goes, I'm housing him. I honestly feel that each individual on the top 14 should be housed and will be housed. It may take six months, it may take 16 months, it may take two years, but each individual on the top 14 will be housed. That's my goal. Los Angeles is the highest per capita homeless city in the United States. I do believe that ultimately it's less expensive for our society to house the homeless. Um, and so I think that continuing to grow our inventory of permanent supportive housing will uh, help us uh, certainly in the hospitals to have fewer expenses both of real illness that occurs when people are exposed to the elements, people who are assaulted because they can't protect themselves, um, as well as people who seek out the hospital as a way to get to shelter. You don't begin with someone who's chronically homeless by you know, saying, here's your apartment, right? Because you have to engage people. And what's great about Anthony and case managers like him is that they meet people where they are. They begin the engagement process. They make people recognize that there is another choice, that there is a possibility of housing. So when you combine that kind of active, empathetic case management with real housing and a real exit from homelessness, you see amazing success. I've never seen a homeless person that I've worked with just happily jump up, jump in a car, and say, let's go get housing. It doesn't happen that way. I met Willie Davis. He was in jail. I went to court. I talked to his probation officer at court. I talked to the judge at court. And they released him to my custody in the hopes of housing him. They probably didn't do what I did with Willie Davis. Willie Davis most likely would have died on the streets. I'm hopeful for Willie because he has his medication at his house. He called me this morning. He spent the night in his apartment. Now I just need him to get on his medication and see his doctor and slow down on that man. So how's it been here for you, my man? It's been good. It's a place to stay, you know. It's a nice little apartment. It's nice and quiet. Nobody bothers you, you know. You got a 30-day supply of medication? Yeah. So we got to go back to the Saban Clinic? get you a follow-up appointment. We got to start doing that. 
I yeah. still got more, I got a lot of medication. Yeah, I need you to take it every day. All right. See you later, buddy. Right, take care. Love you, baby. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Have a good day. I wish it was uh, like a team where we can uh, do this with like 40 people, 50 people, and hopefully that this pilot program that we're doing, it goes countywide, and they'll be doing this in each spot in the county and help a lot of people that need the help. I gravitate to the people that are underserved more because my father left when I was six months old and I always wonder what happened to him. Hi. Oh, you, this, this is my son. I'm glad to see you, man. I've been worried about you so long. Huh? I've been worried about you so long. Yeah, I know. Since my wife, man. I know. I know. I know. I know. <laughs> I love you, man. Be safe. Promise? Mm -hmm. Right. I got back up, boy. <laughs> I got back up. I got an army behind me. Yeah. Be safe, family. All right. I know there's families out there that I haven't seen their loved ones. Somebody needs to love them and take care of them until they find their way back to their families. <laughs>